All right, so I'm pretty kitted up right now. Uh, just wearing my plate carrier with the shot stop uh, level three plus PS plates in it. And uh, these are what plates that I now carry and sell. And I sell these particular plates because these are the ones I believe in the most. And uh, the company is absolutely excellent to deal with. Uh, I'm going to use my hog settle sling. This is an excellent design, pretty simple. Got it set up with a couple of QD cups so I can easily detach it from various rifles uh, for using it when I'm st for stabilization when I'm shooting long distance. That said, in the past I've shot somewhere around 2260 yards with uh, no sling off the tripod um, and been hitting an IPSC target. I think it was two times out of 10 shots. And some, and if it was actually a, a, it would have actually been a lot of shots um, on target because that only represents from the tip of the head to about the belly button is to get out and actually practice in the kit that I have, the gear that I have, uh, so that should I ever need it, uh, I will be ready and more comfortable with it. And I can also address any shortcomings that it has uh, or things that need adjustment. Uh, it is very, very important that you do this so that you can work without looking at your gear. If you cannot work without looking at your gear and say hook up your sling to your Blue Alpha belt, then you are not ready to use the stuff and you're not, you haven't practiced enough. So I know where my D-ring is on my belt buckle. Uh, I've got my other camera set up recording as well. And uh, I'm gonna test this new round that I developed for the 224. I've gone out, I've done my ladder testing. I actually did uh, six steps instead of 10, but I did two loads on each uh, on each step. So what I ended up settling on was the max book uh, load for the 224 with an 80 grain bullet and I'm shooting the Hornady ELDM 80. It has so far shown itself to be a very excellent little bullet and at $22 a box roughly it is a bargain and it's still available because nobody likes 224 except me I think. Um, I really like it. I took that out last night and two rounds, stacked them at 1,500 meters off the tripod, your yard, excuse me. I was kind of doing a little dance there because I was, I was very happy with how, how that turned out for very, very little work. So if you haven't seen my video on five minutes to re precision reloading, please go check it out. That and the video on doing a ladder test, the 10 step, 10 load ladder test, are really like the foundation of what you need if you want to load accurate. You cannot skimp on dies. You can't do it. You can't skip on the, pr you, can, you can get away with different presses and stuff like that, but really the only ones that I recommend are either the Forrester Coax uh, or the Redding. Uh, there's a lot of doohickeys and stuff out there that people say you need for reloading. You really don't. Uh, unless you're, I mean, you could start stepping it up and spending more money on, say, these uh, annealing machines that use, uh, what is it now? It's, now I'm drawing a blank. Like a convection current. Uh, that's a really good investment, but it's like $1,500 that you could probably spend on something better. Uh, that said, when I have $1,500 just kicking around and nothing else to buy, I'll probably buy one of those because it's a heck of a lot safer than the salt bath annealing like I've done in the past. And sure, I get results with that, but I would rather have my annealing be perfect so that my investment in brass is as long-lived as possible, especially when it comes to like 7 SOM or 338. So any of you that want me to do a video on the 7 SOM, just say so in the comments below. I'm more than happy to do that. That is one of my favorite rifles, though I barely ever take it out. The thing is a hammer. So anyway, I'm set up. Like I say, I've got my shot stop plates uh, available at rangetech.us. Guys know probably a lot of my videos are going to get demonetized as this nonsense mat gets keeps on spiraling out of control. So uh, please support the business. The business is what pays for me to come out and do these videos. I make very, very little off them because I have a very small audience of people that are interested in what I am doing. 
And if you have not seen our courses, please go and check them out. I'm available for uh, individual instruction or private group instruction. Idaho is in stage four of the opening up. You know, we're open for business, as it says on Idaho.gov or whatever it is. So here goes, guys. 224. Going to take a distance. Uh, check out my Kestrel Elites for data and then go from there. So let's have a look. See if I can find this rock I picked out. All right. 552 meters, just shy of 600. No, that is 600 yards. We have, I'm a bit sheltered right now, so I'd say we probably have 10 miles an hour of wind. And I've got the Kestrel Elite here, never live, leave home without one. Here's an interesting little thing that you can do to uh, save yourself some time. You've got targets A through <clears throat> pretty much infinity that you can set up. I like to set like A to like 200 and then 400 and 600 and 800 and so on all the way up as far as I plan to shoot and that saves me a lot of time scrolling back and forth so that just like that I'm at my distance So I'm fairly sheltered where I am. I have quite a variance in wind. It's probably from two to 10 miles an hour kind of thing. And uh, because of where I'm shooting, there's gonna be a big difference from where my wind here to where across to where my target is because of the, uh, the dead space in between here and there. So yeah, I guess I should look at what my solution is. All right, so we're gonna try a solution of 3.7. I'm gonna double check my range. 550 on the nose. All right, so we're gonna try 3.7. And I will say, you know, go ahead and double check. Everything's all set up. A 224 Valkyrie, 80, 120 inch barrel. So I know I'm on the right setup. Uh, I have a really excellent 24 inch barrel from LMT that I really enjoyed shooting with too, but the thing is so big and clunky, um, but it does gain me significant velocity. I'm gonna check my other camera here. Okay, I know which rocks I'm on. So it is a little different when you're shooting with the kit on, obviously. Got more padding on my, you know, stuff on my shoulder and stuff to contend with. It's actually really amazing how different things look through good optics versus this old camera. Wobbled a little bit there. Just diff different being loaded up with all this kit. So that again, that's a learning opportunity right there because now I know, you know, this is moving a tiny bit, it's a little bit harder to stabilize. So right there, that is, that is a learning experience. Uh, 
The other thing that's important to get into a good habit of is uh, even if you're leaving a rifle like this, especially if you're leaving a rifle in a setup like this, uh, make sure it's safe. It's safe. Better thing to do is just clear it all together, but since I'm on my own, I'm gonna take a couple more shots at a longer distance. I'm gonna just leave it set up. I've got nobody around. Uh, mind your leash to the rifle when you're walking away, otherwise you will pull the whole thing over. So get in the habit of unleashing as soon as you stop shooting. That should have been part of uh, safing the rifle, right? Because nobody wants a rifle and optic falling on the ground. It gets real expensive real fast. So again, this is the LMT. This is a uh, US Optics older B B17 series scope. It's been a good scope. Tremor 3 reticle, I'm running a WMD nickel boride coated uh, bolt carrier group, an enhanced bolt from LMT. Uh, I think these are American Defense, if I remember right. They have a 30 MOA cant to them. Terminator muzzle brake on the front, it's a T2 in a custom color. And I'm running the steel mags from LMT. These have been really, really excellent. They are extremely rigid compared to some of the cheap 224 6.8 SPC uh, mags that are out there. Highly recommend getting these if you're a 224 guy because they'll stop a lot of issues you have with feeding. And um, these Hornady 80 grain bullets seem to be the, the ticket right now. Now I've run, in the past, as I mentioned in other videos, I've run uh, Burger 80. 80.5 and 85.5 and I've settled on well these for plinking because they're so cheap and then 85.5 uh, from Berger as sort of like the cat's meow for this round even with a slightly slower velocity that's getting me a flatter arc with that 85 than it is with an 80 grain bullet in this particular rifle just the way it works out right so guys be safe out there check out the website rangetech.us if you found this video interesting or useful, please let me know uh, by hitting like, subscribe, and dinging that bell down, downstairs so you get, uh, that just sounds funny, dinging that bell downstairs, uh, so you get notifications when I put out new videos. I will try and put out as many this fall as possible. Uh, keep your ear to the ground, guys. Stay out of trouble. Stay safe. And uh, thanks for checking it out, checking out the video. I'm going to enjoy this cooler Idaho weather for a few more minutes before heading home. That's it guys, appreciate y'all. And bingo.